Well, how do you do again? This is Mike at your Blu-ray and DVD movie review. And I came to, and I'm here to discuss this recently uh, released 1983 3D classic, The Man Who Wasn't There. Man Who Wasn't There. And uh, comes at a, a box protection cover. And uh, it uh, comes with a pair of 3D glasses because it includes the anaglyphic version if you don't have Polaroid equipment. And, uh, and it reads, brand new HD Master for 4K scan, 35mm original camera negative. It's the wild, funniest, mo mo fastest moving adventure comedy you'll never see. You never, you've never seen Steve Gutenberg, Police Academy, Short Circuit, uh, stars as Sam Cooper, minor State Department function in Washington, D.C., who becomes an object of a frantic chase with a dying secret from an agent's hand, a vial containing a top secret formula that can, that can render a person invisible. Uh, Sam immediately drinks a formula to keep his uh, step one away ahead of the Soviet spies. American counterparts, the police, who think Sam must be the agent, thugs, Sam's estranged fiance, who was left standing in front of the altar when this all began, until he can find a mysterious Runkleman and clear his name. H.G. Wells was never like this. Written by, written, written by Stanford Sherman, Kroll in the Ice Pirates, directed by Bruce Malmus, Nighthawks and Hard to Kill, co-starring Jeffrey Toombor, Arrested in Development, Art Hindle, The Broad, Lisa Languas, Class of 19 for William Forsythe, Stone Call. This is a special, Stone Cold, excuse me. This is a special edition who, uh, of The Man Who Wasn't There, Remastered in 3D by 3D Film Archives. Audio comment by Paul Korup and Can Exploitation um, film historian Jason uh, Pickensy, including 2D and 3D Polaroid and anaglyphic red, red cyan 3D version. Contains one pair of anaglyphic glasses. I already mentioned that. Now, I have already saw the movie, so in a few minutes, we will have a discussion about this. Now, this movie was made during the Silver Age of 3D. And um, this was made immediately after Friday the 13th because the filmmakers knew that the 3D wasn't going to last long. I knew... I knew that the I knew that this period uh, I knew that this period wasn't going to last long neither because I knew the history of 3D. Uh, my first 3D movie was back in 1978, the uh, anaglyph version of a uh, creature from the Black Lagoon and came from outer space, and um, I thought that was Polaroid. That's how ignorant I was. And then in 1980, uh, I read an article about the production of the first three uh, uh, Polaroid 3D movie feature uh, coming at you. And uh, I was based, uh, it was the first Polaroid 3D movie uh, since Flesh for Frankenstein, you know, Polaroid 3D feature. And I was so surprised and I was looking forward to this. But as I said, I knew it wasn't going to last long and I began to collect a bag of 3D uh, glasses. Now most of them I didn't take good care of, so I'll show you one that I got that I did take care of. Now here's the um, earlier 3D glass type they would give you when I first saw it came from outer space and uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, anaglyphic. And here's one of the surviving earlier Polaroid 3D glasses I got. It was from the old Martin Twin Theater. And guess what this they were playing? It is the movie that many 3D fans are 
are trying to pressure Mill Creek, which owns the rights now, to release in Blu-ray 3D. Uh, Space Hunters, Adventures in the Forbidden Zone with a young Molly Ringwall. And I saw this in 1983 in May. Now, Stephen Gutenberg portrays this government aide in managing third world ambassadors, two portrayed by Joseph Ruskin and Charlie Brill. Now it seems like that all these ambassadors don't seem to get along with each other. But Stephen Goodberg's late for his wedding and Art Hindle, his best friend, reminds him of it. You get the feeling that maybe he shouldn't be getting married. And so the next scene shows a fiancé pitching a fit about him not showing up on time. Uh, played by Morgan Most. And well, she's acting like a, a bitch, and the ones who plays the my, uh, the bridesmaid, uh, Lisa Langwas, who acts very sweet, and she complains about her uncle Joe, who who she says help tries to help humanity with his chemistry set, but you don't see him in the picture. Now earlier you see these three, I think it's four thugs four thugs. Uh, one of them is uh, a redneck looking, played by Bruce uh, Malmuth, an Indian, played by Ivan Naranjo, Clement von Frankenstein as a British thug, and Vincent von Baggett's, a dark skin, dark haired, dark colored, brown haired, uh, uh, d d uh, uh, thug. A, I think a gay punker portrayed by William Forsythe. And um, there's this uh, scene where there, for some reason the filmmaker is focusing on the Washington Monument which they go in there and uh, William uh, Bag uh, uh, Vince Vince uh, goes up with uh, with uh, uh, Clements and all of a sudden Vince knocks Clement down and takes uh, takes this takes takes this thing with him and before you know he runs out and all the thugs all the thugs uh, are chasing after him now by the time uh, Gutenberg shows up he's late for his wedding and of course uh, uh, his uh, bride, his fiance is mad, and well, um, his friend uh, removes his removes his clothes right in front of her. Front of her for some reason, he's wearing his underwear, uh, heart shaped underwear. Then takes him uh, takes him to the takes him the room to put on his uh, his wedding suit, and. Uh, this is what happens, and all of a sudden, as he's putting his clothes on there, and uh, all of a sudden, this door opens as it's this invisible man comes in. He thought it's some kind of a joke, and it's Vince. It's Vin it, 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 it's it, it's Vince Baguetta, and um, and he t he tries to tell him the problem. He thinks it's a joke. And all of a sudden the punks come in and then they start knocking him down and they start to get after Vince Baguetta and, and well, they, they chase around him. He's invisible. Finally, somebody throws a knife at him and stabs him twice. And, um, twice. And, um, all, and, um, if I can remember, um, all of a sudden, the people at the wedding are wondering why he's taking so long. His fiance, Art Hindle, who plays his friend, they know what the hell's going on. So they all leave, and uh, Stephen Gutenberg's already knocked down. And then the and then Vince Vag Beta materializes all of a sudden uh, with two knives in his back, totally in the nude. <coughs> 
And uh, all of a sudden he wakes up and he sees this naked guy next to him and he said, tells him to move, move, take the knives out. And then he tries to tell him, gives him this, this thing that contains this formula and uh, to give him to, give, it, give him to somebody by the name of Ruckel. Now, Goot's uh, be, uh, friend, uh, Russian, played by uh, Jeffrey's Tambor, and his boss, played by Michael Ensign, they're after him too because they want the formula as well. And uh, it seems like earlier, excuse me, after the wedding, um, uh, Lisa Langlois tried to t speak to his fiance. She's still mad at him, and he's out there. And after they had chased, there were thugs were chasing him, and they decide to see what the formula is all about. And they see it's harmless, and he starts eating it with something. And all of a sudden, he becomes invisible, and he realizes that's what the formula was. It's about invisibility. And um, and um, there's a scene where uh, Steven Spielberg, excuse me, Steven Gutenberg uh, realizes that they're going to get rid of him. So he thought that Linga La Lisa Langlois gave him one of those little things and it, she missed by it when the, earlier. And uh, so right, thinking everything's going to be invisible, he starts taking his pants off. And before you know it, Steve Gutenberg's butt is popping out in 3D. It, now, when I remember seeing it for the first time in the movie theaters, there was a problem in the film. I think it lasts about 20 minutes. The scene where they're being chased, all of a sudden it inverted. The subjects was backstage and the, and, and the background was popping out. And it didn't change until the museum sequence where this tour, where these people are touring what looks like a museum. And uh, the, the, the leaders of the thug has killed one of those uh, thugs and they fall from the top of the building onto the floor. And it straightened itself out. But the uh, Blu-ray version is in good shape. I mean, didn't have that problem. I remember in Facebook, somebody telling me what happens. Uh, I forgot who it was, but they told me that it's based on mis-editing uh, on this uh, under and over process. And if you don't edit it right, if something broke or spliced together and had to be straightened out, it's going to look like this. Now, it seems like that Lisa Langwas took the invisible formula and tried to rescue him by throwing a piece of it so he can become invisible himself. The thing about it is, is that Steve, uh, no, Steven Gutenberg was willing to take his clothes off and do the nude scene. In fact, there's a scene where he runs so quickly you almost see his, well, you almost see his penis. You almost see his penis. And then, of course, um, uh, there was another thing where Lisa Langlois was had to be persuaded to do the nude scene. For whatever reason, she just didn't enjoy it. And that's the thing about it is, there was nothing erotic about the movie. The nudity was about the joke of invisibility. If you're invisible and you no know one sees you, you got to take all your clothes off. But if the formula wears out, you expose your naked self. That was the joke. And the scene where there are, they're hiding in Art Hindle's apartment. He's still invisible. And uh, Lisa decides to take a bath because she had to cover herself up with all these weeds. And in case she might have gotten a little, a little itchy from the plants that they're running away from, from all these thugs and the police are after them. And she wears uh, the dresses that are her, that his friend's ex-girlfriend uh, uh, that he got after she took uh, his best friend's hi-fi and other stuff when they broke up. Uh, anyway, um, 
she comes back in in a sexy dress and these old fogies across the street in the other apartments, they love, they're peeping toms, they love to spy on their telescopes. And it's, it's like a club or something. And uh, they start spying on, on this and they only see the invisible. They don't see, uh, Steven Spielberg still in, Steven Gutenberg is still invisible. <laughs> still invisible and they only see Lisa Las Lassos and she gets a portrayal like she's beginning to French kiss and make out and uh, well she's well she's in the nude and they don't see uh, Gutenberg they see her they show him invisibly lifting her up taking her into the bed and I said before there was nothing erotic about this scene it, it was the humor and then the next day, you know, the sheets are up and all that, and um, and they want to start to do it again in a R-rated style, because it was an R-rated comedy. And then they hear the doorbell, and all of a sudden, Steven Spiel Gutenberg comes out, opens up to get these flowers, which is given by the men who uh, want to thank them for the best erotic, see erotic thing they ever did while they were spying on it with their telescopes. And... Um, and then, of course, you know, you discover that uh, Art Hindle is, they're seeing Art Hindle's and the others coming out. They got to escape again. And, um, and then they have to find out what they can do to stop it. They got to find Ruckelman. And that's the point. Now, this move, this, as I said before, you got two commentaries from. Uh, this website called Def, and I just read it before in, in the, um, where is it? In the um, back, Def. Uh, um, okay, uh, film historian Jason Pekonski and audit Paul Canna, uh, Paul Corrupt, Paul Corrup of CanExploitation.com. Um, but anyway, it seems like they weren't that crazy about the movie. Now, the movie, it is, it is not the best movie that was made, and maybe they should have took their time, and it wouldn't have killed the 3D if they shot it. I think they might have shot it within a month or maybe two months. They did in a hurry. If they did it six months, it would have been a lot better. Two, 3D as well as 2D, but they did it too much in a hurry. And uh, you know how the audience is with a 2D film they do in a hurry. Well, they're going to blame the actors and the filmmakers. As 3D, they're going to blame the glasses. They always do that. But anyway, this movie ain't all that bad. It's a lot better than, um, what is it, Robot Monster. A lot better. Well, if you like this uh, show, please comment. If you didn't like it, please express constructive criticism, even bad criticism. I can take it. Bye.